Hello friends of Data Exchange. Today we want to have a closer look at how we can bring data exchanges and the assets status from the Autodesk Construction Cloud together in a Power BI dashboard that can then be shared with all the project stakeholders, no matter if uh, they have access to the ACC or not. By the way, the Power BI dashboard uh, we are using here, as well as the Revit model, can be accessed through our ACC Sandbox project, uh, which you are invited to join. So if you want to be added to the project, simply drop me your email using this form shown below. If you're new to this channel, hi, I'm Leila, a recovering architect and a technology and Lego enthusiast working at Autodesk. To start with, I have uploaded this Revit model to Autodesk Docs, where I can easily create a data exchange from any 3D view that has been published. I'll do that right away so that the data exchange can process while we are setting up the assets. To set up the assets, we need the Autodesk build module, which has been enabled in this project. So I'll switch over and go to the assets section. Now, there are a lot of options when setting up assets, and I'll do just a very basic setup here because this is not the focus of today's video. And I just want to give you a quick start, but I link some more in-depth tutorials and documentation in the video description. First, I'll go to asset categories and create a new category for my Lego bricks. I could also go more granular and add some subcategories, but as mentioned, we'll keep it simple today. Now we can go ahead and select our Revit model. We can filter the elements in the model to locate the assets. In our case, again, we'll keep it simple and only filter the Revit category, a specialty equipment, which is the category our Lego bricks are assigned to. Here we get a list of all the families that were found and can proceed with the process. In the next step, we can map additional properties. And here we need to map our Revit element IDs, which are also available in the data exchange so that we can connect these data sources later in Power BI. We'll map these to our barcode and hit save. This is usually a pretty quick process. And now we can switch back to docs and actually see our assets and update their status. This is done in the assets tab. And as you can see here, I have a list of all the assets on the left and I can select any element either in the viewer or in the list and update its status in the panel on the right side. I'll just go quickly through this model and change the status on a couple of elements so that we can build a nice dashboard later in Power BI. Now that we have updated our assets, we need to initiate the data extraction. This is done in the inside module where you will find the data connector on the lower left. Here you can initiate a manual extraction like I'm doing now, and I want to include the assets only. You could also create a schedule in order to have your data updated automatically on a daily or a weekly basis. This data extraction takes a while and you will receive an email once it's finished. In the meanwhile, we will go ahead and set up the Power BI dashboard. First of all, we want to load the data exchange, which has now been processed and uh, we can review it on docs and copy the URL for an easier loading in Power BI. Once in Power BI, you need to have the Autodesk data connector installed. If you don't have it yet, you can find the direct link to the Autodesk app store where you can download the installer in the video description below. Here we need to select the data source, which is data exchange, of course, and simply paste the URL we copied in the previous step. You could also proceed without the URL and navigate manually to your data exchange, but I prefer using the URL because it's faster. Once the data exchange has been loaded, we can start setting up the dashboard. First of all, we want to add the Autodesk Viewer. This one is now available through the Microsoft App Source, so you can just search for Autodesk and add it to the Power BI visuals. In order to set up the Viewer, you need to search and add the Viewer Data column 
to the first field and then the external element id column to the other two fields in order to make sure that your other visuals will have a connection to the viewer as well. We can of course use the standard Power BI visuals to show the data from our data exchange as well. So I'll create an overview here showing the Lego type ID, which were added to the Revit families as a type property. As you can see here, both visuals are interactive, so I can easily show and select the bricks with a specific type ID in the viewer. Of course, I can also add a table view uh, where I can add various properties and list all elements from the data exchange as well. And also this visual is again interactive and filters all the other visuals. Now it's time to load our assets data. For this, we'll use another Autodesk connector, uh, which is the Construction Cloud connector already available by default in your Power BI data sources. Since our sandbox project is on the US server, I will select the United States as the region and then navigate to my project. Here we want to load two tables, which is the assets assets that contains the general information about the assets and the assets assets statuses, which is the table that holds more information on the actual status name and so on. Once these tables have been loaded, you will see them appear on the data pane on the right. To better understand the structure of these tables, you can preview them in the table view. Here you can see that, for example, the column barcode has been populated with the Revit ID of the elements as we have selected in the mapping. We also have the status ID, which corresponds with the ID column in the assets status table. We need to know this in order to be able to create the correct relationships between these tables in Power BI. For this, we'll switch to the model view now, and here we can see our three data tables at one glance. In our original exchange, which is on the right, we have the original system ID column, which is storing our Revit ID, and therefore we will drop the barcode column onto it to create a relationship to the assets data table. Next, we need to connect the other two tables, and for this we will link the ID from the assets status table to the status ID in the assets table. If you are not sure uh, whether you chose the right columns, you can always resize them here in the preview and check whether they have the corresponding values as expected. Once we have established these relationships, we can go back to our dashboard and start adding the assets data. For this, I'll add a pie chart uh, to visualize the different status. I want the pie chart to visualize the different status labels, which are part of the asset status table, and to count the different status from the actual status table represented by the IDs. Now, there is a catch. This is not filtering the other views, as you can see, which means our relationship with the data exchange is not fully working yet. This is due to the data type of the barcode column, but it's very easy to fix. Just select the barcode column in the data pane and then change the data type to a whole number. Once this has been accomplished, you can see that you can use the pie chart to exactly filter and visualize the elements in your 3D viewer. If you want to color the elements in the 3D viewer based on the status, you can simply add the label to the color field in the viewer properties. Last but not least, you can also easily add the status label to the element list we have already set up above. This dashboard can now be shared with all the stakeholders, no matter whether they have experience in using ACC or even access to the ACC. And of course, like all Power BI dashboards, you can update the data sources easily to sync the newest assets status data. This was a very basic run through showing the Power BI setup with data exchange and assets. And I'm very curious to hear what you think about it, whether you have already used it and um, whether you are planning to use it on one of your future projects. Please leave a comment and see you soon.